Hi, welcome to Microsoft Project Skills Part 2. This is Kirk Johnson. In this demonstration, we'll add some more tasks. We will look at predecessors, we will enter resources, make assignments, and show a few ways for results. I'll move pretty fast, so please pause the video if you need more time to practice as we go along. The first task of adding more tasks, uh, let's look at a project plan that is in its beginning stages and now we are going to add uh, another level of grouping. So this task actually shows um, level 1, which in this case is some project phases. Level 2, which was our previous exercise, we entered some tasks as level 2. Now we're just going to continue that with level 3. Um, let's say I'm going to put a couple tasks under the row 9. Um, so I'm going to use my keyboard and do insert a couple times and enter uh, design, uh, let's say the conversions, and design integrations. As with before, I'm going to select the tasks and indent them with the green arrow. And now we have uh, another level of grouping. So right now I'm looking at everything in a level 2 grouping, and we see the plus sign and everything is um, showing now with a couple other groupings. As, as you can imagine, a complex plan will have many levels and layers of tasks. The important thing is that you are organizing the work for um, a variety of different uh, stakeholders to look at the project plan. Now that we've finished that, let's go to the next one, which is uh, predecessor. Predecessors are simply ways to show dependencies between tasks. On my view, I can't see that column, so I'm going to position the cursor on the vertical bar and shove it to the right. Now I can see my predecessors. If task 11 needs to finish after task 10, I simply enter 10 as a predecessor. And you can see that the dates are starting to automatically calculate, which is great. I'm doing the parameters, and the tool is doing its job to forecast the schedule. Let's say I want that task only to finish um, after task 10, but also a three extra lag days. That's getting a little more fancy, and to do that, I'm going to double click on row 11. With my task information box, I will go to predecessors and enter three days as a lag time instead of the default of zero. When I press OK, I can see that the additional lag time is entered. You can put in negative lag and positive lag time. So um, experiment with different ways for contingencies and you can see that it gets as complicated as you need. Our next skill is looking at the resource view. This is where we are going to do a view resource sheet and enter some team members. Let's say that Tom and Pat are on the team and we're going to also need a web server as you notice when I enter them, the type is always work, but I know that the web server is going to be a material, and I want to enter a cost for the web server, $5,000. Um, we're going to enter some rates for the team members. Let's say that Tom is $40 an hour and Pat is $60 an hour. For um, overtime rate, we'll just put in a premium. Great, we've got some resources entered, and the next item is to make assignments. The assignment is really the combination of assigning a resource to a task. Back on the View Gantt chart, I can now easily select from the drop-downs the different team members. And uh, if we are going to put Pat on one of these tasks and want to add Tom to it or some other resource. Another way to get a little fancier, double click. And now with the task information box, I can go to resources and drop in any material or cost item or labor item. Press OK and they are displayed in the column. A finished plan will have resource names on all of these um, non-bolded low-level tasks. Back to our demonstration, we can communicate results pretty easily by 
uh, several ways. Uh, when you have a view you like, you can use the Microsoft feature of Copy Picture, which puts the image into your clipboard memory, and you can paste it later. Uh, with this uh, demo, I can also just press the print screen, which is another way to get it done. And let's say that we're going to build a report, and I want to put that image here. Um, and I even want to double click to do some cropping. Um, you can experiment with that. You might have a Microsoft Paint or some other tool to put in callout information or circles or colors. And this is where you can just say you're building a report and you want to have a Gantt view and you can start describing some maybe choices you made or some of the rationale for how you built your plan and assigned resources or any finer points. The skills for review here are adding further levels of tasks, uh, predecessors, resource view, making assignments, and getting information out of project and into some other tools like the web or uh, a report. Not all of your project stakeholders will have Microsoft Projects, so that's why it's good to start thinking how can you get the different views and information into other media. As always, it's great to work with others that are experienced with the tool, uh, look at the help system, um, consider uh, different kinds of training books, and of course you can always uh, search for examples on the web. Have fun practicing and I hope that was helpful.